Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Welcome back to the castle for day, I don't know what day this is, of castle week. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a good one. We're going to start working on the castle again. Oh no, we've got an invasion. <laughs> Gold-plated zombies are after our castle. No worries, we can take care of him and I can show you a little bit of the progress we have made on the castle on streams and off camera and we can work on what we're going to do in today's episode. So to start off with, we have a portcullis here. Now, if I take a couple of steps back and show you this again, you will see that this lacks some of the essential features of a practical portcullis. There is no mechanism that is pulling pulling this thing up or pushing it down. We don't have any kind of redstone stuff involved here. I wasn't going to go too high tech with this. And also, not only would the redstone take up a significant amount of space up here, but even in real life, you would probably have a large raised area up here, a kind of like, I, I don't know, a kind of box that the portcullis could be raised up into allowing people to pass underneath it and then closed back down. And as you can see, we don't have that because I just liked the arch thing here too much. So this is a completely static gate. It's not really going to be raised or lowered or anything. And, you know, if, if it helps just imagine that it can be retracted in there somehow. It's it's a little bit magical like that. But I quite like the design of this. I like how this came together. It is just nether brick fences until you get to the bottom here and then you have dark oak wood fences. Now, dark oak wood and all of the other wood types cannot connect to nether brick fences the same way that the fences connect to each other. Obviously, as you can see, they connect vertically because that takes up the full height of a block, but they don't get these supporting beams in when you have dark oak wood or any kind of wood next to the nether bricks. So you can use that to great effect. You could use it to detail the gate a little bit more, but in this case, I'm using it to separate out these individual posts, which are going to be kind of slotting into the ground, or the, the idea is that they could slot into the ground here. And I've got these droppers on the ground, and these are meant to represent kind of like spaces that the... Uh, the, the dark oak bits there, almost as though the dark oak ones are nether brick fences that have just been coated in soil if it's kind of been driven into the ground here. And the droppers have this wonderful square or rectangular aperture at the top here that makes it look like something could slot in there quite easily. So I buried a couple of those in the ground, raised them up because this fence isn't exactly like <laughs> it's, it's on a, a, a block higher than the one next to it. But I think that looks pretty good. I think that I'm, I'm quite happy with that as a detail and of course even though the gate doesn't necessarily work as a gate, it still looks pretty neat. On the way in here, you can notice a couple of other things. I've done a little bit more detail work in here, making this courtyard a little bit more mucky. And there are some paths going around bits of the castle that I plan to expand in today's episode. Today's episode is going to be about the paths and floors of some of these castle rooms. We're going to do a little bit more path work around here. Uh, I've got these giant doors at the end of here now, and I'm really happy with how these came together. This is all stripped dark oak wood because I didn't really like the look of stripped spruce, and I'm really happy with the texture of this. And also, a couple of them are turned sideways almost to make it look like the door has, you know, elements that have had to be boarded up or maybe some knots in the wood here and there. That has also been emphasized with these dark oak wood buttons, which I might swap out for a different wood type. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about those. Maybe if we if we make them spruce wood, they blend in quite well with the dark oak logs. So I think that might be a, a good alternative. As for these trap doors, they can look like they're kind of bracing the door a little bit further up. I was thinking about making some sort of design in the door with them, but with the door being in two separate halves, I'm not certain that'd look all that great. And along the bottom here, we have the door additionally braced with some stone and andesite, which could, you know, it, it's sort of imitating the, as though there's like a band of metal constricting the door and holding it into place. And then this bottom row down here is just spruce logs, as though it's like a, a tougher material that's going to be able to withstand the friction of opening and closing this massive door all the time, right? It still doesn't look all that great from the inside. It still looks like the same door, but of course I need to work a little bit more heavily on the frame, and we still haven't detailed this room in general. So not going to worry too much about that today. Here on the eastern side of the castle, the door frame is kind of interfering with this gateway through here, but that's okay. I've started detailing a few of these and turning some of the sort of more open courtyard areas 
into little rooms. Like in here, we have some sort of small storage room, which I still need to add a roof to. I've added a few details to the walls here, but that still needs fixing up. And around the courtyards here and there, I've decided I want to plant a couple of custom trees. So these are just placeholders for what will eventually be trees in a few of these different courtyards. Over here, I've made a bit of a significant change. I have broadened out the foundation of the castle here and included this large room off of this side of the, the great hall. I figured this whole area was a bit too open and needed a little bit more structure to it. So I've added that in, done a little bit more work on the roofs and towers here and there. But as you can see, there are still a few sections that I need to uh, go on and get done. I think I, I want to do something different with the designs of the tops of these towers, but I don't know quite what I want to do with those yet. So we will get that figured out another time. The custom trees don't just have to be grown in the center of courtyards, though. I think we're probably going to grow one up the wall of this tower and possibly even one over by the botanist's tower as well. I think it'd be nice to have the trees almost like relying on the walls for support as they grow and it'd be nice to overhang the courtyard here with some leaves. Now you guys have seen how awesome the big door looks. I don't think we need to worry too much about covering it up with some foliage here and there. Could certainly help to make the place feel a little bit more alive as well. As we come into this courtyard, this is the one where I want another nice big centerpiece tree though. And we're probably going to try and make this whole place look like it's been well trodden. I was talking to a, a couple of folks about this and they thought it'd be a good idea to include some maybe like brown concrete pattern or something around the edges here and there eliminate some more of the green just to make it look like we're not just walking into another piece of a grassy field make it look like the castle has been well used in its time and so instead of just relying on grass paths everywhere and then inevitably having to substitute out some of those dirt blocks underneath there because I haven't really replaced those with full materials yet. I think finding some full blocks like coarse dirt and brown concrete powder to make the place feel a little bit dirty and rugged but still like it's alive and uh, and, and stop it from just being a giant grey mess. That's the main thing. The main thing I didn't really want to just cover the entire floor area of here in cobblestone was just because otherwise if you look down the corridor here like this it had just it's just grey as far as the eye can see. So I kind of want to work in a few more colors and I think we're going to work on that a little bit later today. Over here, we've got another door that I'm really happy with. These are columns of spruce wood with spruce trap doors lining them here. And there's just spruce planks behind that as well. But I like having the trap doors. It's really nice to make little angled doors like this. And this makes it look like it's just been swung open. It's just wide enough for a player to slip through. I think there might even be some mobs that might not be able to get through there. I know spiders wouldn't for a start. I don't think that horse could either, although it seems to be fine up there where it is on the roof. Not entirely sure what that's about, but there you go. And then up here, this is something we put in when the foundation episode came about. Uh, I've got a little covered walkway over here that I originally kind of drafted out just in, in stone and eventually just decided to build this covered walkway that leads through to this room which I'm not sure quite what this room does yet, but it'll do something in the fullness of time. I'm thinking maybe it'll be some kind of like eating hall for the people who aren't fancy enough to eat in the Great Hall. And I was thinking the same of this one over here because it's opposite the barracks. And if this is where the soldiers are going to be uh, bunking, if this is where they're, they're going to be hanging out, uh, and sleeping. I think over here on this side, potentially we could have a mess hall for the soldiers or something like that. And there are still some very odd things in here. I still need to maybe do a little bit more structural work. And I want to get rid of all of these big grassy kind of elevation changes because the mountain is right there, but I really don't see the need to have all of this terrain still in here. We need to flatten the room out a little bit and use it a little bit more like a, an organized room. This right here is the botanist's tower. We're gonna have a custom tree maybe growing up the side of that and, and draping foliage everywhere. I need to work on the doors around here and so forth. And there are these little nooks here and there that I've decided to put little shelter roofs on and I cannot wait for some of the new blocks that are coming in Minecraft 1.14. We're going to be having some really nice detail blocks, some barrels and stuff around here, maybe even some of the grindstones and other things that we can use, especially out in a yard where the soldiers are going to be. I imagine something to sharpen your weapons on would probably be a good thing to have around here. So I've been putting placeholders in here and there with these oak stripped oak logs and planks and, and so forth around the place, but I think but that'll have to wait. For now, I want to spend this episode focusing on the pathways and the floors of some of the rooms that we've already built here. 
So I'm going to grab a little bit of brown dye from over here because we want to use a whole bunch of this. I didn't do the other side there. Fair enough. Uh, we need to use a whole bunch of this to make ourselves some brown concrete powder that we're going to be substituting in for dirt around the place just to give it a little bit of texture and variety. There we go. Six stacks of brown concrete powder. I probably won't need a much more than that. I might also make a little bit of the green concrete powder as well, just to substitute that in for grass. And by the way, if you're building in a biome that doesn't have particularly green grass, like here in the extreme hills, green concrete powder can be an excellent substitute for that. Obviously, it involves landscaping a large area of the terrain, but if you want things to look a little bit greener in a colder climate, then green concrete powder is not a bad substitute. Unfortunately, of course, it does mean that you don't get to grow any grass on it or anything like that, but if you just want something that looks hyper green in a cold environment, that is not a bad way to go. Especially if you're after an artificial green like AstroTurf or one of those kind of heavily manicured lawns. There you go. Look at that. It's got a nice kind of, you know, yellow undertone to it, which I think looks pretty good and is definitely going to be a contrast to a colder climate. But next to the green grass of the plains biome, I think it blends in a little bit more nicely. We probably won't use a huge amount of this because, yeah, it, it, it might overcomplicate things in our color palette a little bit. But I don't know, here and there, it can look a little bit like moss. And also, if you don't want to have a, uh, a grass block with the dirt texture on the side, if you want to have something like what you would get with better grass with Optifine, where the grass texture covers all of the sides, it really doesn't look too bad to just layer in a little bit of this in a in a pile like so. And it can look like the grass is growing over the side. Once you back off a little bit, you could almost imagine that was a full block of grass. And much like when we were planning out the pathways of Founders Forge, some of the paths in this castle can actually kind of inform what we want to do with the space. Like over here, for example, I hadn't really considered what we were going to do with this spot over here, but it does need something. So I'm wondering if maybe we can put in some sort of shelter in the in the wall recess here, maybe put some fences up like so. And obviously this kind of doesn't take into account the full swing that this door might have, but I feel like this little shelter over here might just be obliterated if we open the door out that wide. Instead, I think maybe we'll just build a little wooden lean-to sort of thing up here for now. Actually, that is feeling a little bit smushed by the door. We're going to move it one block over. Yeah, this at least feels like you could get to it if the door was there. And I think maybe this could be a small kind of hitching post for a horse or something like that. Maybe somewhere out of the rain that they could have nice, easy access to run out the front gate instead of coming through one of these side gates from whatever stables. Because I think I said we were going to build like a small stabling area around here. And then that kind of fell by the wayside a little bit. And now I think these wall sections might be a little bit too close to the rest of the courtyard to really do that. I don't know, actually. Maybe you could fit one in over here. Yeah, there we go. Not bad. A couple of fence gates on the front of that. And it'll be just nice to have a, like a little stable on the inside here. Probably add in a couple of comforts for the horses, that kind of thing. But a few little pens sort of thing. A few stalls and... That's not too terrible. It fits in quite well on the side there as well. It's not going to block too much of the stuff, but it, make, it makes itself known. I like that. That's cool. For now, probably better torch it up a little bit just so stuff doesn't end up spawning in here while we're working on the rest of the castle. But I think it's time to get on with these paths. And what better way to do that than with a time lapse?
Welcome back, folks. Hope you enjoyed the time lapse. And it looks like that's probably all we're going to be getting done in this episode. But I wanted to go around and sprinkle a little bit of bone meal in the spots where we still had some grass growing. And don't forget, we can always shear that and we can make room for stuff like ferns and things like that. Grow ourselves a couple of those. Let's get just one single piece of grass there instead of the double high there we go we can always plant some of this stuff manually on the coarse dirt like that instead of bone mealing there but i think that's gonna look pretty good in the grand scheme of things i'm excited to have some pathways leading around here and these will always grow and change as the structure of the castle improves and we get some more details in stuff like the tree placements though i think i'm pretty happy with so far we might even put, fit something like that around here unless i can think of something else to go in some of these spaces and yeah i like I like this big tree coming together here as well. We will probably put ourselves a whole bunch of leaves on this guy and maybe even add another little section to this building at the front here because this is sort of a multifaceted structure over here and I think it can probably be added to a little bit more now that we've narrowed the scope of this gate. It's not just going to come straight through here. Oh, there's the <laughs> there's the tower pig making an appearance for the end of the episode. Fantastic. Well, I think that is going to be it for this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.